You're right there, Tim G5TM again. Thanks for joining me. Now, uh, what I'm going to be doing today is looking at a very convenient, quite short, but I think a good performing antenna if you want to work some DX or just get on to 10, 12 and 15 metres. Now, these three bands, of course, have really started to come to life. Now, we really are on the upswing of uh, Solar Cycle 25, I think it is. Now, 10, 12 and 15 are basically open on nearly every day and uh, they, they're becoming really popular bands. So the antenna I'm going to look at is basically a chance to put a single, single antenna up that will cover the three bands quite well. So the antenna itself is a vertical doublet. Uh, it's a dipole. Uh, vertical on a fiberglass pole uh, it's five meters in total that's two two and a half meter legs or two eight foot legs if you're thinking about it in terms of imperial and that is basically a half wave on 10 meters now as long as the uh the dipole is fed with ladder line that could be 300 ohm 450 ohm 600 ohm or any home brew that you want to do um fed in the center with ladder line then as long as that's the case then as long as the antenna is at least around three eighths wave on the lowest band of operation that's uh what three quarters of a half wave then effectively you can get away with pretty much a, really hardly any difference in terms of the real world efficiency to a half wave dipole. So in this case, this antenna is a half wave on 10 and a 3 8 wave on 15. And of course it takes in 12 meters in between as well. So the configuration then, as you can see here, vertical, uh, fed in the middle. Uh, you can see on the, on the bottom right hand uh, box there, uh, in terms of the, the measurements, the, uh, the antenna itself, the Z1 means it's two meters above the ground. So the bottom of the, the vertical doublet is two meters above the ground. Uh, the maximum height is 7 metres at Z2, so it's fed 2 metres off the ground, up 5 metres to a set the top of the 7 metre pole, and the length overall is 5 metres. So then, how well does it perform? Well, if we look at the far field plots, I've just modelled it on MMA and A very quickly to see how it would do. And by the way, when we're looking at modelling, we are looking, of course, at the best, best case scenario. Uh, we're not taking into account uh, buildings and, and stuff that's in the way. Uh, but... Obviously, you can look at this from the point of view of either a quick up and down antenna for home or even something you can use portable. So let's look at it from that point of view. So let's have a look at uh, the far field plot then for 10 metres, first of all. I mean, the antenna is exactly, basically the same antenna. Uh, of course, it's uh, already a halfway for 10 metres. Nice pattern, though, as you can see, some uh, decent gain there, as you can see at the, the lower angles. And of course, when we're setting up a, uh, a vertical antenna, effectively, we're trying to get that low angle of, of radiation to try and work some DX. Great if you buy the C, by the way. I've done a little video on that recently, which I'll put up here somewhere, um, which you can have a look at. So uh, effectively, uh, some gain at the lower angles is what we're looking for with a vertical. And even just two metres off the ground a half wave as what this is on 10 meters will do pretty well in terms of the feed line loss we're losing 450 ohm for this little uh, little look and on the bottom right hand side there towards the bottom you can see that we've got an overall loss of 0.2 of a db with 21 feet that's about 6.4 meters of ladder line and that's what i've sort of used here i'm sort of guessing i'm going to use that much ladder line i think and that by the way goes into a one-to-one -one ball and, and then into a two now with a very short bit of uh, rg213 with a negligible amount of co uh, loss on that the coax before it goes into the tuner so the lad line itself has about 0.2 of a db uh, loss on 10 meters so that in itself isn't that um and surprising it's a resonant dipole on 10 meters at the end of the day now let's have a look at 12 meters what we've done here we've compared the uh far field plot uh the black uh, trace is for this doublet fed two meters on the bottom and the blue trace is for again a uh, another uh, dipole two, fed two meters from the bottom but this time uh, completely resonant as a half wave dipole on 12 meters uh, slightly longer you can see basically that the the far field plots of both these antennas is practically the same so this antenna will give you as good a performance frankly on 12 meters uh, in terms of the uh, feed line loss then yeah on 12 meters we've got uh, 0.4 of a db so absolutely nothing to worry about there and again there'll be some additional loss a little bit on the coax which will be negligible with about uh, a meter long worth of coax about three foot of rg213 before the tuner and the tuner will have a little bit of loss but overall uh, the system will be quite uh, quite efficient now finally looking at 15 metres, and remember this uh, doublet is now a 3 8 wave, so it's 3 quarters of a half wave on 15 metres. So this is where we're pushing it, not so much to the far outer limits, but we don't want to get much shorter than this in terms of our lowest band of operation. You can see now there's a little bit more of an advantage for a resonant 
half wave dipole ball on 15. That's the blue trace compared with the black trace, but pretty negligible. And in the real world, uh, there wouldn't be much of a difference there. And if we look then at the, the feed line loss of, for the ladder line on 15 metres, a bit more now, 0.7 of a dB. We've got a bit more reactants. It's dealing with a higher SWR. Uh, we're just straining that ladder line, that feed line, just a little bit more now because this dike ball is doubled. Don't forget, it's a little bit on the short side now for 15 metres. But, you know, overall, in terms of convenience, which is what a multiband antenna provides us with above anything else, of course, um, there's not a huge hardly any trade-off I don't think in terms of performance uh, this antenna is very small space you've just got to run the uh, the ladder line as close to 90 degrees away from the antenna as you can you can slope down a little bit as this will you won't have any issue at all really um, and then you need to run a little messenger line to obviously keep the pole upright the other way but what have you got in return? Well, you've got three bands. It'll probably tune on 17 as well. It might even tune on 20, but it's only a quarter wave there. But it'll probably give you 17 metres. But I thought I'd focus on 10, 12 and 15. Two reasons. There are three bands that are a lot more open now than they used to be. And frankly, they're three of my favourite bands. Along with 40 metres, they're probably my four favourite HF bands at the moment. So um, I'm just looking for something I can use. Now, what I will do with this, I'm going to set this up at home. I'm going to have a go at, at running this at home to see how well it does before I take it out portable. And in the UK, the nights are getting uh, lighter now. The clocks are about to go forward next weekend, I think, which will mean that effectively it'll get dark at about 7.30 in the evening UK time, which means that going out portable and mobile will become a whole lot easier. And I'm really looking forward to that. And of course, the bands will stay open, at least to our working day anyway in the UK, that bit later as well. Well, thank you for watching. And if you like what you see, don't forget to click subscribe and that notification bell for any future videos that I release. But above all else, stay safe. Enjoy yourself on the bands this weekend and in all of the times. And we'll catch you again soon for another one. Bye-bye now.